Hey everyone, welcome to IEO Lama. Today I'm going to show you how to make an entire escape room in one box. This box expects a sequence of RFID card and it will only open if it sees the RFIDs in the right order. So for this escape room in a box, we're using RFIDs and of course you can make any riddle that you want using those RFIDs. I'm using those three cards and you can hide those cards and the hiding places can be answers to other riddles. You can also use different uh, types of RFID cards. So for example, this, you may know this from your gym, it's an RFID. You can also use stickers. So I have a bunch of stickers here and those are RFID tag stickers. They come in ribbon, they're extremely cheap very affordable and what you can do is that you can attach them to different objects so for example you can take one of those stickers and put it in a book so this will obviously not destroy the book but now when you present the book it fails I also have a bunch of cards here and those are huge cards but you can also put stickers on that so you can have a big play of cards and maybe only if you present a royal flush then the box opens. As you can see I have three cards here one two three and they will only work if I present them to the box in the right order. So let's see what happens when I present card number one. That is a nice sound and as you can see the number goes down to two. Let's present card number two. Now let's see what happens when I present this uh, RFID. This is obviously the wrong one. It's not part of the sequence. Let's see. Oh my God, this is a horrible sound. And look at this, we're back to three. So let's start again. One, two, and three. That, that's the sound of like, and the box opens and I can see the king. So how does the thing work? Inside there's an Arduino Nano and that controls the entire box. But before I go into the specifics of the electronics, I wanna show you the concept behind the box. We have an LCD matrix that is used to keep score. And I will talk about this LCD matrix in a later video because we have some plans for it. And it has a target and this is where you place the RFIDs. It has a lock. When I close the box, the lock, the lock closes. When I made this box, I made sure to have several holes. There's one hole at the bottom, and this hole is what I use to open the box if I don't have the right card. So the lock has a little pin, and when you touch that pin, the box opens. If you've done this box and you haven't made this hole for the pin, there is no way to open the box. I made another hole here, and this is just an auxiliary hole so I can, uh, um, get the cable through if the box is locked and I still want to uh, access the Arduino. And I have a few holes here and that's for the sound to go through. Now let's open the box and see what's inside. This is my favorite part. So one, two, and three. The box opens. Um, so there's a battery. I'm going to detach that for a second. And let's look at all the components here. So I have an RFID scanner right here, and that's connected to the Arduino. I have an MP3 player. And again, that's connected to the Arduino on one side, and it's connected to a speaker on the other side. Now, if you want to put sound files, there's a little um, micro SD card. And I use this to put audio files on the card. They're currently on folder number four. Here's a picture. And you can do the same. Uh, there are free files for success, failure, and mission completed. So I'm going to put this back in the player. Um, another component that we have is the Arduino. I'm using an IO shield. You don't have to use this. This is just so things are easily accessible. And the last two parts that we have are a lock. This runs off of 9 volts and a relay. So because the Arduino runs on 5 volts, it doesn't have enough juice to trigger the, the lock. So the Arduino connects to the relay, the relay connects to this battery pack, and that battery pack connects to the lock. And this is how you build a box. Now let's have a look at the software. As promised, let's go over the software. So at the top, there's the name of the file, that's escape room real box. 
uh, because it is an escape room riddle box. And there's a link to our channel, Iolama, make sure you go and check it out. There's a little about that explains what we're doing. And then uh, if you haven't downloaded any libraries, these are the libraries that you need to download. So there's the Open Smart Thread MP3 library that con controls the little MP3 player. There's the RFID library that controls the RFID component. There's the new matrix and new pixel libraries which control the LED matrix. And lastly, the matrix code was borrowed from Arduino Learning, and this is where we borrowed it. Um, so we're giving them proper credit, and the link is here. So if you're only here to create this project and you don't really care about all the Arduino stuff, so you only need to do very little things to make this project work. You're gonna have to prepare a micro SD card with three files. One file for success, one file for failure, and one file for the big uh, finale. Then we're gonna put our YouTube link here. You're already here, so make sure you like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Lastly, here's a parts list. Um, these are all the parts that you need to build this project. And this is where the fun begins. So if you're only interested in making this work, this is the only part where you should edit. And each line corresponds with an RFID tag, as I've showed you before. Um, here we have four, this, is, this reel is made up of four RFID cards. And we've given them colors, so each time you progress, the color changes. So there's a yellow one, a white one, a green one, and then for the grand finale, there's another white one. And this is it. If you just want to build this project and make uh, an escape room riddle box for your kids, this is all you need to know. If you want to dive deeper into the software, then follow me. So of course, we're including software serial. Um, to control the serial port. And here we have a bunch of sections and each section controls one component. So for the lock, this is just a simple on off pin. This is just a simple digital pin and we've used pin four. Then for the MP3 player, we have the analog five and analog four ports. We have the sound directory name, which is four. Um, this is just how the MP3 player works. And then we have three files for success, failure, and complete, and we've named them one to three. And again, um, basically this is what you have to do because this is the annotation that the MP3 player uses. For the NFC, we have to include uh, spi.h and mfrc522. And then uh, here are the pins that we're gonna use. We're gonna use an SS pin 10, an RST pin 9, and we create the RFID reader. And then we have a string right now called content, it's empty. We're gonna use that string to read from the RFID detector. Here is the matrix code. So of course we're including everything from Adafruit, the graphics library, the new metrics and new pixel. This whole thing is to make Arduino happy. And max text trap is the maximum number of letters that we have when we want to tell the new metrics to display something. Um, each letter takes four lines, so 16 can do a max of four characters. Here we have some color presets just to make our life easier. So black, blue, red, green, a bunch of other colors. And this is where we're building the matrix. We're going to use pin 8 as I've showed you in the build. Um, and this little code, this is the code that we borrowed from uh, um, Arduino Learning, and this is what's gonna actually display things running on the matrix. Uh, let's move forward. Here, here's the actual software that you're gonna use for the reel, and you can use this to build uh, similar boxes. So each step or each answer that you have is built from an NFC tag and the color that corresponds to it. So. Here you have, uh, here you'll have characters that are the ID of one NFC tag. And once you've solved it, you get a certain color that tells you that you're doing okay. These are the colors that we've defined in the top. Um, this is the solution size. So of course you may have a riddle that has only two cards or you may have a riddle that has five cards. And solution size automatically calculates the number of steps you have to go through to solve the riddle. And of course this is the size of the um, answer array divided by the size of one array member. The solution is the RFID tags array and we're just using the define that we've uh, created before. I'm gonna go up a bit. Right now I'm going to show you how to get the numbers to use on this, on this little array. So I'm gonna go and look at the console, look at the console, well, it's not active, so let me connect um, my box and start the console. 
and it shows me that the size of my solution is four because I have four lines here and it asks me to show a card to the card reader, which I will do right now. As you've heard, this is the wrong uh, RFID to display, but here's an interesting thing. This is the tag that I need to go and use on the array. So I can copy this tag, I'm hitting Control C, and this can be the solution to the third step. Uh, as you can see, it's slightly different from the solution to step number four. Now, different companies will have different length of RFID tags, and this is okay. Uh, now that we've defined our structures, I'm gonna go to our um, setup loop and then to our main loop and explain what we're doing there. Then I'm gonna go back and explain each what each step does. All in all, this is quite a short sketch, so it should be relatively easy to follow. Um, let's start with our initialization. So we're starting our serial, this is easy. We're seeding uh, a random number and we're saying, hey, this is the size of the solution. As you recall, we've calculated it before. We're uh, initiating the NFC card. So SPI begin. Um, we're telling the RF, RF reader to initiate. And we're asking the user, hey, show us your card. Then we're initializing the LED matrix. Um, and lastly, we're setting the volume from the MP3 player to 40, because trust me, it is loud. Um, this is the relay. So we're telling it um, to start, and we're saying this is an output pin, and it's gonna be set on high. Let's look at our loop. So we're saying, has, have you read anything? Not yet. We're asking the NFC card to tell us, have you found anything? And we're going through the matrix loop, which I'm gonna explain in a second. If our current step is bigger than the solution size, that means that we've actually solved all the steps. Then we're playing uh, the audio complete file, which says, hooray, you've completed this reel. Then we let the file play for a bit. We open the lock and we move forward. And basically this is it. If we haven't solved the reel yet, so um, if we've read anything, we're gonna wait for half a second. And this is because otherwise we'll just read, 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 read very fast. And then if, even if we have or have not read, we wait for 75 uh, milliseconds and we do this over and over and over again. Let's look at what read and set does. So read and set, this is how we get answers from our, uh, this is how we get RFID tags from our uh, RFID reader. So we're asking the NFC reader to tell us, have you find anything? If there is nothing there, we return. But if there is something there, then we look at the string and we compare it to the relevant step in our solution. If we hit a success, then we are advancing one step. We're setting uh, a file to play, which is a success file, and we move forward. If the RFID tag that we've read is not the right RFID tag, so that means this is not the next step in the sequence, we set the solution back to the beginning, so you have to do it all over again and we're playing the audio failure file. That's the annoying buzz that you've heard before. Either way, we show where we are in the progress of the solution, and we're playing either a success or a failure file. And because we find something, we return true. Let's look at the read NFC function and see what it does. So if we're asking our RFID reader, hey, is there anything there? And if there's nothing there, we return. Um, if there is something there, we advance to the next step. So the RFID scanner may detect several tags. We just wanna read one. So we go, hey, read whatever's there. And we show, we show our solution. And the way that we do that is that we go over the bytes one by one uh, and we convert them to hex and we display them on the console. And this is how you get the RFID tags that I showed you before. Um, and then because we find something, we return true. If you remember, then we ask what card it is. And if, this, if it has the right card, then we advance. Let's go again to our loop and see what the next steps are. So the next step is do matrix. So we've read the NFC cards. Maybe it was good, maybe not. The next thing we do is do matrix. Because all the matrix functions are blocking, I'm gonna be using millis to convert it to unblocking. 
and I'm gonna take it 100 milliseconds at a time. So this is just grabbing the timestamp and making sure that I'm actually in a position to advance to the next matrix display iteration. I'm filling the screen with black. I'm putting the cursor at its current position. Now this position may be inside the matrix or it may be even before the matrix even started. Um, this is the text trap that we, the text length that we saw before. And I'm asking what should I print and in what color. If I'm in one of the steps, then I'm picking up the number and I'm gonna show it in the right color. Kids love the, the, the fact that color changes. And if I'm finished, then I'm gonna print tada in white. Uh, then I'm actually printing this, and this is the this is the function that moves the characters um, along the matrix. Then I'm doing matrix show, and basically this is it. Then the next step is to check if I've completed the solution. If I've completed the solution, I'm playing the audio complete. I'm waiting two seconds to let the music sink in, and I'm opening the lock. And this is actually a very trivial function. Uh, again, let's go to the top and go to this function. And lock open basically sends a, a low pin to the signal, uh, which activates the relay. And then uh, it reverts to high. When I'm thinking about it, I, have, I should have probably used the always closed function of the relay and do this the other way around. But either way, you understand how it works. Um, and this is it. This is how you get the real box to move from one step to another. We're going to have links to all the components in the description below. We're also going to have a link to the IO Llama GitHub page where you can download this project. If you like this project, then share, like, subscribe, um, and stay tuned for more content that you cannot allow to miss.